I do want to ask you one yeah. more thing, though. Sure. So we do something at the end of our interviews yeah. where we call it the quick fire round. Oh boy! So this is okay. no thinking, no <laughs> it's the, nothing. The one word. Yeah. One word, uh, Fast. Nothing. This is the thing. I've had quick fire rounds where it's like longer than the interview. I'm like, ah! <laughs> like no, no. The idea is you're not supposed to be thinking about. They're just supposed to answer. Tell me the first thing that okay. first thing that comes to mind. Okay. 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 <laughs> right. Describe yourself in three words. Ambitious, loving, open. When I say the word successful, who's the first person that comes to mind? Michelle Obama. <laughs> who's an incredible, yeah, yes. incredible woman. You met her, right? I didn't meet her, but I you got didn't? to see her um, speak in Toronto, right. and then I devoured her book. So that it was amazing. amazing. Yeah. Who is a, someone you've admired from whatever from afar that you've actually got to meet in in person? Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about that. How did that happen? Yeah, I was. Seven, 16 or 17 years old, living in St. Lucia at the time. And of course, leaning into my passions always. I was always writing and creating plays at school, getting people to act them out on stage, etc. And Nelson Mandela was visiting St. Lucia. And my principal asked me to write an ode to his life and to perform it at an event where all, like hundreds of school children would be performing to welcome Nelson Mandela to the country. And so I wrote this like 10 minute poem and got four, three of my friends, and then we had a choir backing us. So we performed the poem, and then got my, my principal got it like printed out onto a plaque, and then we got to walk down, meet him, present him with the poem, and chat with him for a little while, and that was one of the most amazing experiences of my life, yeah. Wow. How did you come up with, what, how do you summarize in 10 right? minutes? I told, just told his life story oh, from wow. growing up to imprisonment to um, to uh, getting released and then his political legacy. So I just told it in kind of four stages. Yeah, that's incredible. What what did that feel like for you? Aside from him meeting him, yeah. But for you to have this piece of work that yeah. you had written mm -hmm. perform it in front of yeah at the all these at the time I had no idea how important it was. I really didn't. Like, obviously it was, uh, I knew it was important to meet him, but I had no idea of what, how it would stay with me. Mm -hmm. And also, interestingly, it made me also value my place as a Caribbean woman. The reason I say that is because when I was 12 is when my dad said, we're moving to St. Lucia. And we were like, what? No, like, we want to stay in Canada. Like, you know, we love it here. Like, we're, you know, we're Canadian. And we we're like, why are you taking us there to that place, right? And we totally snubbed our noses as it, at it. And it was a huge culture shock for me as well, going um, back to St. Lucia uh, as a 12-year-old, having yeah. been growing up in Canada. And so it was very difficult. And I always felt like, oh, I'm going to have, there's so much more opportunity in Canada, right? And then when I looked back and I'm like, I don't think I would have ever had that opportunity mm -hmm. if I was living in Canada. Mm -hmm. there, and there's so many things I got to experience by living in the Caribbean that I didn't experience here to the, to the point where I would like to orchestrate my children living in the Caribbean for at least like their high school. I want them to have that experience because I think it is so, so valuable to your life to be able to experience that way of life. It's much different from here. Very different, very different. And just also just the exposure to culture. Yep. Right? That's right. Mm -hmm. a, okay. Back to quick fire, yeah, which is not, your becoming fault. not so your fault. quick. <laughs> <laughs> favorite book. I know you love to read. Favorite book. Yeah, the, the best book I recently read was Michelle Obama's biography. And it, it really stayed with me because what I the takeaway was, you know, we have these, as women, we all have these insecurities. We all have these things we worry about. And we sometimes feel like, okay, when I'm successful, when I make it, when I get that job, when I make the million dollars, I'm going to be good. I'm gonna be the most confident person ever. No one's gonna be able to touch me. I'm gonna to be awesome. And I realized that we're all the same inside. It's, it shows up differently. But when you get to that level of success, those insecurities are still there. And so she was so open and transparent about that, that it reminded me that you have to work on yourself every day. You have to work on stealing yourself against those 
voices every day so that when you do get to that level of success, you could also inspire somebody else. But it's not going to go away yeah. just because you attain that thing that you think you needed. Yeah. I think for so many of us, that's how we live life. Right? When? Mm -hmm. When I have the yeah. house, when I have the car, when I have the job, yeah. when I'm in size, whatever mm -hmm, dress. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. And yet, th there is no different. You'll yep. still be, you take yourself yep. with you wherever yeah. that is. <laughs> yeah, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> What's your yeah. favorite gift to give? Uh, time. Mm. Time. What's your favorite yeah. thing or what do you love most about where you live? And you can define where you live however you want. The peace, mm. peace. And I always thought I would be, a, I, I always was a city person and loved being surrounded by noise. And I have a feeling reflecting now that that was an indication of, of what was going on for me, that I had a lot of voids that I needed filling. And as I grew, as I got married and had children, um, I started to do a lot more introspection as like who I was without and with all of these things. And so there's a lot less voids now and I enjoy the silence, I enjoy the peace. I love that, mm -hmm. there's a lot less voids. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> What's your favorite item of clothing? Um, I love a dress, I love a dress. <laughs> I do, I, I love a good, powerful dress that you feel sexy and feminine and powerful in. Um, you can't beat, you can't beat a good dress. What's your favorite time of day and why? Um, it's gotta be before sunrise. Um, and it could be because I spent seven years waking up at 1.30 in the morning. And so I am yet to get out of that routine, but everything is so quiet at that time. And I feel like it's when my mind is actually most active and most alert and has the best ideas. Did it take you time to transition? Like, were you still waking up? Like, oh, it's yeah. 1.30, must go to work. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, I, it still happens now. I think I still only sleep about four hours because I used to sleep in four-hour chunks. And so I'm still trying to figure out how to get into a normal person's sleep routine. <laughs> yeah. If you could pick any two people to have dinner with, who would it be and why? And they can be living or yeah. not. Uh, at the same time? Yeah, well, you could have separate dinners, I guess. It's up yeah. to you. You, you <laughs> define the parameters. <laughs> um, I would say Bob Marley and my maternal grandmother. Bob Marley, because we were born the same day and I was absolutely obsessed with him growing up, uh, obsessed with his music and the impact that he had on this world. And I would love, he was taken way too yeah. soon. And I would love to ask him what he thinks about the current music scene and what else did he want to accomplish. Yeah. My grandmother, because I did know her, I did spend a lot of time, a good chunk of time with her um, in my teens. She was Dominica's first female minister of government. Oh, wow. She was so powerful, such a rebel, so ahead of her time and Alzheimer's robbed us of like her memories yeah. and yet she had so many great stories to tell us but I feel like I didn't have enough time with her and I would just love to hear more about her life as a child and more about her parents and her parents parents so many of us lack that connection to our ancestors and I just wish I had some way uh, of getting more information about where I came from. So this wonderful dinner, whether it's together, separate, yeah. what would you eat? What's your favorite thing to eat? Oh man, uh, okay, it's weird. It's bison. <laughs> like, I love bison. I just, really? It's the best tasting meat. If you have a chance to have it, please have it. No, I've had bison. I, really? I, I, Not I impressed? Just, I, oh, I, I, no, no, it, I was just kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, however, it, also- It is a deeper flavor. Like it yes. definitely has like a distinct, yes. However, I am uh, also a giant seafood person. So give me lobster and shrimp at the same time. When we were in, J in Jamaica a couple months ago by the beach and I had a giant lobster and I was the happiest person alive. So I would absolutely have lobster tail and wine. I'm good to go. <laughs> what can't you get through the day without? Well, it's really hard to get through the day without hugs and kisses from my two kids and of course my husband. My little family gets me through anything. What's the screensaver on your phone? 
The screensaver on my phone is a picture that my eight-year-old child decided was, a, was needed on my phone. And I think it's because it was his favorite vacation uh, that we went to Mexico a couple years ago. And he believes that we should go to Mexico for his birthday, for his ninth birthday. So I think it's like a, a passive aggressive, like subtle, like mom taking me back to Mexico, um, a message that he's sending on my screensaver. You're going to Mexico next yeah. year, right? <laughs> What's your favorite app? Oh, wow. Um, my favorite app, it's gotta be Apple News. Yeah, like it's kind of funny. It's like that's the first app that I check in the morning because I want to know what's going on in the world, and it gives me a good cross section of the news. I'm still a news junkie at heart, I guess. I was gonna say that. Yeah. Like, do you ever get past that? I gotta know what's happening everywhere yeah. in the world. And you know, because um, working on a when I was working in journalism, I was working in a morning show, and so I and my team, we were the first to know the th big things that were happening and we were responsible for waking Canada up with this with all the news mm -hmm. and so I still have this rush like to be first like to know like what is happening so still there so we know what your son's favorite place is what's mm -hmm. your favorite place that you've ever visited um oh uh, it's a t so I grew up in St. Lucia and so St. Lucia is so gorgeous and beautiful it is one of the most serene scenic places in the world even when i when i reluctantly moved there at age 12 when i landed and we were driving back to our house i remember even that young being like i bet the people who live here have no idea how amazing this is i bet everyone here takes this for granted that young i realized like it was just such an amazing place to be However, now being married to a Jamaican and having gone to Jamaica several times, and my St. Lucian peeps will hate on me for this one, but Jamaica is incredible. It, there's just so much to see. We've been there so many times and I haven't even discovered the other half of the island. There are just so many amazing um, natural phenomenons there. There's just so much to see. It, if I could tell anyone to go anywhere, I would absolutely experience Jamaica. Now, if you had to pick a theme song for your life, yes. what would it be? Superwoman by Alicia Keys. Yes. Most <laughs> deaf. <laughs> Even when I'm a mess, I still put on my ass with it so much as, oh, yes, I'm a superwoman. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What's Superwoman's worst habit? What is your worst oh. habit? <laughs> oh. Superwoman's worst habit is not listening. In the sense that, I know how to listen, and listening is an active thing. You have to actively listen, and very often I am so wrapped up in the next thing that I have to do that I am thinking about 17 things at one time, and I don't listen either when my child is speaking or my husband or my friend or whoever, and I have to make more of an effort to listen to one person at a time. <laughs> What do you wish you had more of in your life? Time, 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 always time. And what's a question you wish people would ask you more often or that you wish I had asked you today? How are you doing? Are you okay? How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting by, I'm getting by. I'm trying like everyone else, but like sometimes you don't stop to realize how much you're doing and you think that you can just continue holding it all up. And, and sometimes you just want someone to be like, hey, I see you. You're holding it all up. You're doing okay. That's so interesting you say that because I have to say, when I ask that question, that's the response I get most often mm -hmm. is that most people feel like we ask each other, hey, how are you? Mm -hmm. I don't really mean, yeah. how are you? It's, yeah. just, it's, a, it's just a formality. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, hey, how are you? And I'm not really listening, actively yes. listening to how are you really? Yeah. And that so many of us really want to be asked and for people to actually listen mm -hmm. and hear, mm -hmm. how are you? Yeah. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the gift of your time, because I know you're, 
insanely busy. And so you taking time out to spend time with me is so appreciated. Thank you for sharing your story. And as I said to you before, thank you for what you are doing to help so many of us share our stories. Thank you. This is time well spent. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank You're you. awesome. You. And you know, the whole time you were talking, well, not the whole time, because I was listening to what you were saying, thinking that lipstick color is... <laughs> That's Rihanna Fenty. <laughs> oh, is it? That is Fenty, yes. <laughs> See, that's yes. so pretty. Yes. Here's what I'd love to ask you as our community. So I want to know from you, who do you want me to have on the show? Who would you like me to interview? Who are some of the amazing women whose stories you would like for us to share on this platform? If you have any fantastic ideas and even better, if you can connect me with them, please comment, leave your comment or DM me and tell me who are some incredible stories I should be sharing on this platform. And the other ask that I have of you is for you to subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, we're on Instagram and Facebook, and share. Please share. If you find any of our interviews inspiring, please share them with your friends and family. 